Good morning, everybody. I just want to take a few minutes of your time before we jump into our main event here. My name is Jill Smith. I'm the Deputy Director of the Clackamas County Department of Health, Housing, and Human Services, which we refer to as H3S, just because it's a mouthful. And I appreciate this opportunity. There's just a couple things I want to tell you about. First, thank you. I know how busy everyone is, and um, we really appreciate your interest and willingness to be here. Second, a big thanks to Public Health, to Don Emmerich. Um, Don continues to push H3S and Clackamas County as they focus on data and technology and a public health overlay in all that we do. Um, as we pull together new programming, things like housing, things that serve our most vulnerable residents, Don and Public Health continue to nudge us and tell us to think about things differently. And that's one of the reasons I'm so excited to see these presentations today. Don, keep pushing, please. Um, it seems technology advances daily. I'm constantly, every day, hearing about a new way to access or do business differently. Most of the time, this requires a credit card or a bank account. If you need a ride to the doctor or you want groceries to deliver, be delivered to your house. And while this is great for some of us, not everybody has access to the world of technology today, and that's my, my worry. Um, while these are convenient, um, there are many that are being left behind. So H3S, Health, Housing, and Human Services, has a committee that's called IDEA. And IDEA stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Action, with action in bold, because we really want to make a difference and do something. Um, their focus is to look at ways across our department we can work both internally and externally, focused to ensure equitable service delivery, hopefully with the use of technology, to those most vulnerable in our community. And with that little introduction about H3S and who we are and how proud we are of public health, I wanted to take, have the opportunity to introduce Stephen Green. Um, we're very fortunate to have Mr. Stephen Green, our keynote speaker, with, with us today. Stephen is a recovering banker and venture capitalist. <laughs> Hope you're well into recovery, Stephen. He was born to live in Portland as he came into this world an hour after the Portland Trailblazers won their first and only NBA championship. <laughs> wow. He has worked tirelessly to support, connect, and grow underrepresented founders on the West Coast for almost two decades. By day, Stephen is a director at WeWork and spends his downtime supporting area startup founders through events like Pitch Black and PDX Startup Week, while also serving on a number of boards, including the Oregon Growth Board, Self Enhancement Inc., and the Oregon Small Business Advisory Cabinet. I just just touched base with Stephen. He also told me he's very involved in the Portland Housing Bond, which is a big area of interest to me personally. Um, Stephen's the father of three and more than likely has more shoes than you do. Um, spreadsheets are Stephen's superpower and sneakers are his kryptonite. And please, everybody, welcome Stephen Green. All right, let me see if I got this right. Test, test, test. Everybody hear me okay? Perfect. All right. Community prescription. Uh, you'll notice the RX up there. Uh, it comes from the Latin word meaning to take a recipe. Uh, today, I'm going to find a spot where I can talk. Uh, what I was planning on doing today uh, was have a talk with you guys that was 15, 20 slides about innovation um, that's happening around communities and community health. Uh, the things happening around the world where people are grinding up herbs and putting concoctions together so we can live longer, happier lives. 
But unfortunately, uh, this weekend happened. And uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like to tell you what happened this weekend as I continue to try and find a good spot. Uh, so for myself, um, Jill gave a really great uh, idea of, of some of the things that I do. Uh, but I'm someone who's always been drawn to community. Uh, the first person to always step up and give a helping hand. And as with a lot of things, uh, the crazy ideas in my life, uh, oftentimes they start with the black signal. Those not familiar with the black signal here in Portland, it's, it's a call out by the community for help. Uh, oftentimes when someone needs a pat on the back, a rallying cry, um, or just some, some words of encouragement. This weekend the black signal came from my friend Cole who is a founder here in Northeast Portland, and she was telling me about a local Latino-owned coffee shop that was broken in for the fourth time in three months. The same person broke in each and every time. And the owner of the coffee shop, Erica, has had to come out of pocket each time thousands of dollars to replace glass and other fixtures inside of her space. Cole said, Stephen, what are we gonna do? Now, those that know me know I didn't say what I should have said, and that's I have to continue practicing for the talk that I'm giving on Monday. <laughs> so instead, I said, well, maybe, maybe we could do a, a GoFundMe campaign. I've, I've, I've never done one of those before, but maybe it's a good idea, and maybe we can, we can raise some money that way. So onto the internet I went, um, searching through Google reviews and other GoFundMe campaigns around the world. Uh, and in a couple of minutes, I was able to use some pictures from the website of the coffee shop uh, of the owner and her staff. Um, and with some other background, I was able to go and put together a GoFundMe page for her by noon on Saturday. And it went live. And I put it on my Twitter. Uh, someone was talking about being into social media. So Brenda, here's my Twitter. I do do social media. Um, and it went live, and you'll notice people were interacting. The next few hours were spent retweeting likes, comments on Facebook, going to next door and sharing information around the plight of the entrepreneur in Northeast Portland. Um, this tweet alone engaged with more than 40,000 people over the next 12 hours. The one thing I had forgotten to do was call the entrepreneur. <laughs> Earlier that morning when I had found out that she had had the break in, I sent her some words of encouragement via text. I didn't hear back. And at five o'clock on Saturday afternoon, she gave me a call. Hello? Oh, Steven, I'm just calling to thank you for your kind words. And I said, Erica, how are you doing? And she said, you know, it's a, it's a rough one, but we're gonna find a way to make it, make it through. We always do, we always do. I don't know where I'm gonna get the money, but we're gonna find the way. And I said, so you haven't been on social media today, have you? And she said, no, no, I, I'm eight months pregnant. I've got a five-year-old to take care of these two businesses. I just didn't have any time. I said, you should, you should take a look at your social media account. She went and she found the GoFundMe page. And in less than 12 hours, we had surpassed the $3,000 goal that we had set to raise money for her. She inst instantly became quiet. Uh, I could hear her starting to cry, and in that moment, my, my heart swole up, and, and I could feel not only she was healing, but I was healing myself. Words of encouragement came in from around the world. There was comments from people in Japan, London, giving her warm words of encouragement, and someone in Hawaii actually organized an event for this coming Friday where people will meet up at the coffee shop and give her in-person support. This got me thinking about how healthy communities exist around the world. And I found out about blue zones. Is anyone in here familiar with blue zones? So these blue zones around the world are where the healthiest people living their longest lives exist. Japan, Greece, Italy, Costa Rica, Loma Linda, California. These are the places that have the highest percentage of people living in their 80s, 90s, and even into their hundreds. Lots of research has been, has been done over the years around what's going on in these blue zones. Research comes down to two basic points that they think is happening. 
One, these people remain active in these communities. Daily going and doing intense workouts, active lifestyles, walking around. And then two, the second component to this is they have thriving social connections in their community. They're either religious affiliations, neighborhood associations, or other things that are happening where they're constantly stoking the fires of their interpersonal interactions with people in their community. To me, this is not a surprise. I had the healing moment with Erica. This brings us to the number one prescription that we all take in our lives. Every year, more than 100 billion aspirin are taken around the world. The inventor, Charles Gilhart, um, Gilhart, back in 1858, he had an idea that the aspirin could prolong the lives of people around the world. And for decades now, um, it's been getting refined and retooled, and now Bayer Pharmaceuticals uh, makes sure that it's a safe product that people take each and every day, and it helps with uh, keeping away cancer, keeping away heart, heart attacks, uh, it's a fever reducer, and it's one of the things that the, the prescription is work. It's, and, and we all know it, the tried and true saying, take two and call me in the morning. It's because of the, the success that they've had um, with the aspirin. This brings me to what we're supposed to be here for today. Innovators, public health professionals, people that know data, um, they're going to talk about some really, really innovative things, some things that are really, really far off in the beaten path, and things that we haven't seen come true yet. What I want to give some clarity to the chaos around is thinking about some of the things that are really, really easy for us to do, and a call to action for all of us in what we can do. And that's a riff on take two. So, Think about in your community, in your circles, who you can go and take two with. Go and take two and support two GoFundMe campaigns. Take two and go and have coffee with a coworker or a loved one that you haven't connected with recently. Because I think in the end, you will find the healing that I had also this weekend. Thank you. I've got a little bit of extra time. Does anyone have questions? Recovering banker, economist up here. Can you talk a little bit more about your pitch black? Yes. So um, I started my first business when I was a junior in high school, in college. Um, and I've owned uh, approximately six businesses since then. Started a brew pub with some friends. And one of the most recent endeavors is an event called Pitch Black that we do around the country. And so it's a shark tank, shark tank style event where we bring together eight to 12 African-American entrepreneurs with their ideas and they pitch an audience of generally between 250 and 350 people. And then the spin on Shark Tank is instead of venture capitalists going and deciding who the winners are and who gets invested, the audience selects. And we use an app during the event where all of the attendees go on and log into a website where they make a selection on who should um, split the winnings. Uh, we've done it four times here in Portland, twice in Seattle, twice in Austin, uh, once in Philadelphia. This year we're gonna be expanding to six more cities. Uh, in the four years that we've done it in Portland, 38 entrepreneurs have come onto the stage and pitched, and they've gone on to raise uh, over $21 million uh, for their ideas. Um, one of the uh, ones that rings uh, the most with me is uh, our first year for Pitch Black was run by a gentleman uh, named Tyrone. And when I met Tyrone 12 years ago, he was homeless. He was living in a homeless shelter. Uh, he started his first business while he was in that homeless shelter. And today uh, he owns a company called One App Oregon that he's raised more than $4 million for. And they help people with barriers to finding housing, find housing very, very fast. And he does it here in Oregon, uh, Idaho, Georgia, and he's going to be expanding around the country as well. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Harriet Nemhard. My 
grandmother lived to the age of 102. My maternal grandmother lived to 102. And uh, my maternal grandmother, uh, we celebrated her 100th birthday this summer. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to know what got you interested in the blue zones and what are you uh, pursuing with respect to, to those ideas? Uh, so the, the blue zones really came up as I was, I was doing research um, for this talk looking at anomalies. Uh, I'm an economist by training. And so I was looking for things that were outliers um, that didn't have to do with, um, that were not just related to primary and secondary care. And so that was really lifestyles. And so uh, when you look into the blue zones, it's not that they have um, you know, amazing doctors or you know, access to emerging technologies, it's that they've tapped into um, these lifestyles that have, that have worked for generations. Thank you. <laughs>